Today we're going over a few things to check if your encoder is missing counts. We're using the E5 for demonstration purposes, but these tips would hold true for the E2, E3, and E6 encoders as well. Let's get started. First, let's make sure your encoder disk and module are matching. Modules are designed to work with specific resolution disks. If there's a mismatch, the encoder won't work correctly. Let's start by looking at the encoder disk. The encoder CPR is printed right on the face of the disk. As you can see here, this is a 1250 CPR disk. The text is small, so a magnifying glass or maybe slip a, a piece of white paper underneath it so it's easier to read. Um, but in this case, we do have the correct CPR on the disk. So let's look at the module. The module has a part number printed on the front face. So on the bottom half, you'll see that it is a 1-1250-I here on the part number. The 1 is for the 1 inch disk, which is what we're using, and the 1250 is the CPR. I indicates index. It looks like this disk and module do match, so let's move on to the next step. When they do match, the next thing to double check is that the encoder is assembled according to our specifications. If the disk is not aligned with the detector chip, it will not work correctly. First, let's visually inspect the hub disk for any damage. We're looking for larger issues such as bent, scratched, or contaminated disks. Small dust particles or fingerprints shouldn't be an issue. We're talking about larger problems that impact multiple lines or the overall shape of the disk. If everything looks good, you're going to want to verify that the encoder base and hub disk is centered on the shaft and that the hub disk is correctly spaced in relation to the module. To do this, we're going to use the spacer tool that was provided with the order. And in this case, the spacer tool does not slide under the hub assembly. So this may be the first part of our problem. Let's correct that. You can do this by loosening the set screw. I'll we'll have to move this up on the shaft slightly. Slide that spacer tool underneath and then press that back down so that it fits snugly against that spacer tool and retighten the set screw. This may have been the only problem, so you could reassemble and retest at this point, but we'll go on to the next step to show you what else we could check as well. So we're going to now check the uh, radial alignment or the centering of the base. So we're going to remove this disc completely. And then using the centering tool provided with the uh, kit, we're going to slide this onto the shaft. and. I'm not sure if this will show up in the video, but you can see that the centering tool does not fit inside that center hole on the mounting base. So with this base plate out of alignment, now the detector inside the module will also be offset, which will cause problems with the disc and the sensor being aligned properly. So we're going to loosen these screws up. Just a little bit. And then that centering tool will now fit down that taper inside that center hole there. And we can put some firm pressure on that base while we tighten these screws up. So now our mounting base is properly centered to this shaft using that tool. We can reinstall that hub disk, again, using the spacer tool. Some light pressure there so that it's snug against the spacer. Tighten the set screw down. And now our alignment should be complete. So let's retest it. If you are still having issues even after rechecking the alignment, you may want to verify the runout of the shaft or axial play in the shaft as well. Because if the shaft itself has runout, then that can make the disc move in and out of alignment as the uh, shaft rotates. So 
So now, we can run our test. For this test, we are using our QSB uh, encoder to USB adapter, um, which connects uh, a encoder up to any Windows PC. And we are using our free CPR quick check to, uh, to verify the CPR and index on this encoder. And there you go. As you can see, we are now getting the correct CPR count. So we did have an alignment issue before. Um, if you've checked all of these things and are still having issues, you're going to want to let us know. Start by reaching out to support at usdigital.com. Be sure to include the lot number listed on the encoder cover. It begins with an M. And let us know that you've seen this video and checked through all these steps so that we can expedite the RMA process. Everything we mentioned in this video are things that we'd be asking you to check before initializing the process. So letting us know you've already done this will just make things that much faster.